Head out to the phone lines to crank up hour number two. Our pleasure now to be joined by the head coach of LSU baseball, Jay Johnson. Coach, really appreciate your time. How much different is fall number two for you personally now that you've got a season in your rearview mirror? Yeah, everything's good. Weather's awesome. Football team's winning. Yeah. We're working hard over here, so it's all good. You're digging the football. Ran into you on Saturday. You're like, are we going to win this game? I'm like, I don't know. And you kind of you kind of had a hunch we might. Yeah, it's good. It's fun to watch uh, Coach Kelly and their staff work and improve the team. I've got a chance to go out to a couple practices and see how they operate and uh, really believe it's only a matter of time. And they uh, deserve a lot of credit for the improvements they're, that they're making. I think there's going to be some improvement to the baseball team coming up this spring, working through it this fall. Um, I want to ask you about a couple of guys. One is Trey Morgan, first of all. We know that he was kind of gutting it out as of last year, had the big knee brace on, uh, went out and played for Team USA. What does he look like now that he's halfway through a fall? Yeah, Trey's having a good fall. He had a good summer. Uh, obviously a great honor for him to make Team USA. And then really went to work after that, added some strength. I think he's put on about 12 to 15 pounds. And then his just knee is healthy again. So his ability to run, kind of getting that dynamic back into his game. And is really uh, advanced as a hitter. And I know he's had two really good seasons here already. But you can see a difference just in terms of the maturity that bats the pitch selection, plate discipline, ability to hit mistakes. He's always going to be a great hitter with two strikes. So really excited to see what he's he's doing this fall. You've added the National Freshman of the Year, second year in a row, this time Tommy White from NC State, now here in Baton Rouge. A lot of DH for him last year. You've played him at, at third base here in the fall. What have you seen from him defensively? We know the bat's pretty good. Yeah, he's doing a great job. I, we've worked hard with our infielders from really day one of school. Uh, he's highly motivated to do it, you know, much in the same way Jacob Berry was when he came here, you know, kind of maybe answering that question mark. And uh, he's advanced quickly. I think he's made one fielding error in 10 or 11 games and uh, has shown really good range for his size. He reads hops well, does a good job playing low. He's got an excellent throwing arm and uh, honestly has exceeded expectations to this point. To me, when you think of this baseball team, it, it starts with the number one pick in the draft, and that's still in Cruz. Talk about his leadership that he brings to this team, and what's it like being around a guy like that every single day? He's the best. I mean, there's really, um, you know, in, in my coaching career, and I've been very fortunate to coach a lot of good players, but it's kind of like Chris Bryant, Dylan Cruz. You know, they're kind of in a class by themselves. And I think what makes Dylan special is uh, you really look at his game and, there's not one point where you go like, ooh, I, I don't know about that. He's a great defender, turned himself into a great defender in center field. He's an explosive runner on the bases. The power is uh, impressive, and just the at-bats that he takes and squaring up the ball. And I don't know what his final numbers were last year. It was like 350 or something with 25 homers, and it was like the loudest 350 you could possibly hit, most impactful. Um, he's awesome to be around. You mentioned uh, the leadership piece. Uh, he's speaking out uh, more, and I think it's great for our young players to see. Um, he leads both an example and by by his voice, and uh, that's really positively impacting us right now. Before we get to some of the new arms, I want to talk about uh, one of the guys who was a big impact on last year's team, but towards the end of the season, Grant Taylor kind of lost the strike zone at times, and it wasn't quite as effective. The stuff's always been really good. I've seen him twice this fall. It looks plenty good, and he's throwing a lot of strikes. What do you envision as a role for Grant moving forward on this team, and, and what has Coach Johnson done to, to kind of improve the strike throwing? Yeah, he's really, really elevated himself. I think he did a, a great job for us last year. I think he got a little, maybe a little tired towards the end of the season, but some of those early outings that he had once we got to conference play were huge. Uh, I think he threw four scoreless against Texas A&M through five, I think, to finish the game, or five-plus at Florida, a big series win, um, and had some really good performances. Then uh, went out to the Cape Cod this summer, got a chance to start a little bit, uh, kind of refine the strike zone with a couple pitches. I mean, he is going to be right in the thick of this thing to be at the front of it, you know, relative to a, a starting-type pitcher or the highest leverage innings type pitcher, but I don't think there's anything you can't do. I think um, the strikes have been good. You mentioned coach West Johnson making a positive impact. I think Grant would be able to tell you that 
uh, he's taken the mound with a lot more confidence. But it's it's four pitches for strikes and uh, with elite type stuff right now. So if you're to ask me, maybe who's going to be the biggest like wow jump on the team from last year to this year, I think Grant Taylor would be the, the name I would give you. That would be exciting. Jay Johnson, our guest here on Hunt and Hill. Paul Skeen's the guy you bring in from Air Force, pitched for Team USA uh, over the summer. Seen him out on the mound a couple of times. Uh, what have you noticed from the big right-hander? He's special, too. I mean, you know, the, the physical talent is, is unreal. I mean, he looks like a major league starting pitcher just in terms of, of body and size and presence. He's a very good athlete, moves down the mound well. Uh, secondary stuff is really – uh, or exponentially jumped quickly, you know, in working with Coach Wes Johnson. Uh, sliders become a plus pitch. The changeup, I mean, he could throw that blindfolded, you know what I mean, turned around backwards and put it where he wants to. And the fastball is really overpowering. It's been up to 99, and now he's throwing all three of those for strikes. Uh, has great mound presence, does not get rattled easily. Um, so you really see, you know, the maturity element there help him maybe from being a part of the military academy. And then offensively, it's it's hitting ability and it's big power. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of some of the adjustments he's made here quickly that I think, you know, he'll need to do to handle SEC pitching, maybe the way he handled Mountain West Conference pitching. And uh, he's taken to those quickly and has been pretty impressive in the box too. So everything we hoped for and, and wanted to this point for sure. Coach, I know you don't win uh, baseball games on paper, but looking at this pitching rotation you're going to have this year compared to last year, talk about some of the versatility you're going to have based on what you had to deal with last season. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's remotely comparable, and I say that with the greatest respect for what those guys did. I mean, Mikhail Hilliard really stepped up for us last year. I mean, I think we won nine of the ten SEC games that he pitched, and that's a, that's a big deal. You know, those guys at the back end of the bullpen, you know, Paul Gervais was amazing for us. Eric Reiselman was great for us. Uh, so I'm proud of what those guys did on the mound last year. But in, just in terms of a talent standpoint, you know, you guys mentioned Paul Skeens and, and Grant Taylor, and then you're talking about Thatcher Hurd, who I think is a potential uh, high-level high draft pick, potential high-level weekend starter. Ty Floyd, you know, I think – uh, has really made a, a jump similar to Grant Taylor. And then you're looking, you know, from the left side, you're looking at Riley Cooper and Nate Ackenhouse and Christian Little uh, from the right side. Uh, Chase Shores is probably our most freshman now ready type type pitcher. I think he's got future, future Friday starter written all over him. So when you look at options, it's just there's so much more flexibility and so much more you know, strikeout type stuff. And hopefully that takes a little pressure off of our defense. And uh, we do a good job limiting runs. One of the guys uh, you didn't mention there that we haven't seen quite yet is, is Jaden Newt. We had saw Leah Van with a report uh, a little bit earlier that said that he was coming along and, and should be getting the ball here very shortly. What are your thoughts on him in the fall? And what are you hoping to get out of him? Yeah, he's super talented. Um, he had some arm soreness uh, coming off of his high school season that we've just been very careful, you know, working with he begun a throwing program this week um uh, may or may not pitch in a game in the fall i think uh we'll get him up uh thrown to some live hitters but the goal is to hopefully get him turning the corner into 2023 where he's fully healthy and you know jumping into that group we just talked about as well and um but yeah he's a super talent um you know much like chase shores you know the stuff and the ability is really uh Excellent. Exactly what we're looking for in terms of recruiting picture, pitchers. But, you know, we're going to put these guys' arm health first, and uh, we want to make sure we get them booted up correctly. Last one here, Coach. Your time very, very much appreciated. Uh, Gavin Dugas playing some second base for you a little bit on the infield. He did that early in his LSU career before going out to left field. We know offensively what he was two years ago and kind of battled through everything last year. I know he hit two home runs on Sunday. What have you seen from him defensively? And you think there's a chance that this guy could – be the guy he was two years ago coming up in the spring yeah he's a great kid as everybody knows around here and hard worker and you know good leader uh sets a good example for the rest of the players uh you know has some power in the bat i think he had two home runs in the game on sunday you know offensively we're just looking for you know the consistency and the, the quality of the at bat and ability to move the offense and move the ball forward with runners in scoring position and manage the strike zone 
you know, all things that are important to, to being an elite hitter uh, at any level. And then defensively, we're, we're just trying some things out relative to second base and, you know, a little bit of third base to see what kind of lineup flexibility that we can have. It's always nice to know he can go back to the outfield, but he's competing. He's making the routine play. Um, you know, he's got a good, strong throwing arm, which helps in turning the double play. Um, but I think an early surprise or positive surprise is where we're at in terms of the infield with, you know, Jordan Thompson and Gavin Guidry is, is a freshman that's really making a real positive impact. You mentioned Tommy White, Ben Napol. Um, so we feel good about where we're at. Jack Merrifield's had a nice ball so far. So we feel like we're, we're much better shaped there as well. Any chance I can duck out and talk some baseball here in a bye week, I'm going to do it. Coach, we really appreciate your time. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.